My name's Celia and I'm the Wildlife Habitat Officer for Kent Wildlife Trust. I've got quite a lot of wildlife friendly things in my garden already. I've got pollinator friendly plants, we're feeding the birds and I've got a hole under my garden gate for the hedgehogs. But there's one thing that's really missing from my garden is water. So this weekend we're going to be building a pond. Our garden's really busy already. So this space on the patio is the only place we've got for a pond to go. I have my plan. Now I just need to cut my timbers to shape. So I've got my wood now and this is 10 centimetres by 20 centimetres treated timber. It's kind of like a small sleeper and now I've got to cut it to size. And I'm still soaring, still soaring, still soaring. Blisters. Finally, the last cut. Yay! Although I could also have used sand, I've got some gravel, so I'm going to use this to level my timbers. I've managed to get it fairly sturdy. It's all nice and straight. This is just the bottom layer. Now I've got these metal braces. They've got some holes in them for screws, and I'm going to use these to screw all the bits of wood together. So I'm really, really pleased with my frame. It's finally finished. It's nice and sturdy, and now I can get the pond liner in it. Before I put the pond liner in, though, I'm going to line the bottom of the pond with these old rubble sacks. They'll protect the pond liner from any sharp stones underneath. And now I've just got to wrestle this pond liner into the frame. I'm going to use these felt tacks to pin the pond liner onto the timber. Tack the pond liner onto the timber just underneath the line of the top of the timber. To get the pond liner to fit the inside of the pond neatly, I folded the corners up before tacking them in place. I'm using a Stanley knife and a ruler to cut the spare pond liner off just in line with the top of the timbers. I don't want the water, if it gets too full, to go down this gap here between the pond liner and the wood because that would make the wood damp and then it'll rot. So what I've done is I've actually put this, this block here at the back a centimetre lower and I've covered it with a pond liner all the way over the top and down the back. And if it gets too full, the water will just run out over the back. To help wildlife get in and out of the pond, I've stacked up a pyramid of old bricks at the back of the pond. So I'm going to use some bricks now to create some different height levels in my pond. I've added stones up to just below where the water will be. That way, when I put my marginal plants in, they'll be just at the right height. The deeper areas, that's where I'll be putting the oxygenators and also the floating plants. My children get the fun bit, they get to fill it up with the water. We are using tap water and of course that does have chlorine in it, but since we have to leave it for a couple of weeks before we get the plants anyway, the chlorine will have a chance to escape. So I'm really, really pleased with how our pond's turned out. It's just the right size for the garden, it looks really, really good. In the next month or so when they become available, we'll start putting some plants in here. We'll get some oxygenating plants, a few floating plants, and then some marginals, maybe some nice yellow flag iris or purple loose stripe. But if you don't have a weekend to spend soaring wood, you can make a perfectly good wildlife friendly pond out of a washing up bowl. You'll find all the instructions on our website.